all of the videos to this point, we've asked the question, how do people or firms behave when we present them with a series of choices? How do they respond to scarcity? We never have really asked how much is it worth to these people um, to have these opportunities. Now in this video, we're going to move on to that question. What do market participants get from participating in the market? In particular, why would consumers present themselves willingly to a market? And why do suppliers present themselves willingly to a market? And this can be seen from a simple supply and demand example. We've got an equilibrium in a market, and so we could go ahead and solve for that. One alternative way to the way I did it in lecture two is to set the prices equal and then solve for the quantities. At setting the price for demanders and the price for suppliers equal, subtracting 10 from both sides and adding Q to both sides, dividing through by 3, and plug back in and we'll get our equilibrium price. And of course, put some labels on the graph. So there's a nice review of how to solve for equilibrium price and quantity. Let's focus on the graph. Let's just focus in on this demand curve. And one interpretation of the demand curve is it tells us at that quantity how much were consumers willing to pay for that product. If we look at the height of the demand curve, at these quantities here, it's clearly above the market price of 30. This difference between the market price of 30 and the consumer's willingness to pay, which is given by the inverse demand curve, that's just what we call consumer surplus. And in fact, it encompasses this entire area here, this triangle, above the price up to the demand curve. An alternative way to visualize it is to ask ourselves, how much is it worth to the consumers if we just gave these consumers these 10 units. first unit was worth all the way up to the demand curve there. The second unit was worth all the way up to the demand curve there. So that we'll trace in this whole region here the value to the consumers of the product. That this value exceeds what they actually pay, which is price times quantity. Let's see that this red region is bigger than the green region by the amount of this triangle here. And that triangle is what we'll call consumer surplus. Okay, so what about the producers? Why would they ever come to the market? Well, if you remember from the previous video, our supply curve just represents the marginal cost of producing a unit. And so we can do this a similar exercise, asking how much did this unit cost, how much did this one cost, and we can go ahead and trace out the costs. Now what you'll see is that what the consumers paid in this market goes to the suppliers and you can see that they get an excess, they get a surplus as well and that's what we'll call producer surplus. So there we have it, a reason to trade. Consumers go to the market because they get consumer surplus from the market. Producers go to the market because they get producer surplus. There's a reason for willing trade, and we can see that this, in some sense, is the value of the market. If we wanted to say, how much would society be paying if we just wiped this market off the face of the earth? It would be the amount of consumer surplus plus producer surplus. That's the value of this market, and it has its own name, and we're going to call that total surplus. So there's our measure of well-being in society. It's the measure that people generally take when they go to the market. This is opportunity cost of participating in this market. This is marginal willingness to pay. These are measures of welfare that are based on people's actual behavior. And so this is one reason to really like these. Now, we'll get into a lot more detail in the coming videos about or under what conditions total surplus is the largest. In that situation, we'll call that situation an efficient situation when we have maximized total surplus. Now that's, that's one criterion we could use for policy making. We'll talk about a whole array of different criteria that we could use, but this is a really nice way to see who gets what and who benefits most from market participation. This is a nice start to a whole rich theory.